Back in the garage today. Back in the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on guys? Back in the garage today, getting ready to do some work to my 2016 KTM 1290 Super Adventure. I just want to say, if you hear that humming noise in the background, it's because I have the AC on because it is really, really hot out today, so apologize in advance. I'm going to show you the part numbers of what I'm using. It should fit pretty much any uh, KTM 1090, 1190, 1290 out. I'm not 100% sure on the 2022 models, but just check your part numbers. I will link the parts I'm using down in the description below. I will also show you here in a few minutes the tools you're going to need. You are going to need at least one specialty tool in order to do this. The rest of them, most of them you should have. So uh, anyway, let me show you the parts. So to start with, this is the chain and sprocket kit. You can get a look at the part number right there. I'll also put it up on the screen. This is the factory OEM kit. This is what we're gonna put back on my bike. In addition to that, we also have another factory chain slider. I'm not putting the little bottom shark fin on. I'll show you that in just a moment. So this is the little shark fin I was talking about, this lower chain guide, unlike a dirt bike one where it actually feeds through it. This is just a deflector guide. If yours is damaged, obviously you want to replace it, but this one's in great shape as was the original one I took off the bike when I replaced the chain the last go around. So I'm just going to leave this one here. Now you may have noticed in that last clip, I don't have the rear wheel on my bike. If you need to know how to remove the rear wheel, I'll link that video up there. It shows you how to remove the uh, front and rear wheel. I had just put new tires on my bike when the new chain kit arrived. So it didn't make any sense to put the wheel back on since I was just going to have to take it back off again anyway. So, um, I know some of you are probably wondering why are you doing the OEM kit? Well, this chain on the bike right now has lasted me over 26,000 miles. The previous one I replaced at about 17,000, not because it was wore out, but because I was getting ready to head up on a, about a 9,000, 9,500 mile trip to Alaska. So I didn't want to take the chance. I've gotten great wear out of them. Sprockets actually still look pretty good. We'll obviously show those here in a few moments. And for the money, it's kind of tough to beat. So that's why I'm sticking with the factory chain. Now, if you need to know, if you don't know how your, if your chain's wore out and needs replaced, there are a couple ways. In the case of this one, it's just started to kink a little bit. And that's where, you know, it's not perfectly in line anymore. You've started to get some dirt in around the O-rings and it's just not holding up. The other way to do it is measure 18 pens across. And if your measurement is over 270 millimeters, between those 18 pens, it's time for a new one. I think it's 10.71 inches. In any event, mine needs replaced. So we're actually gonna start with the chain. I'm gonna break it. Uh, I will list you all the tools you need to do this. I will also be reiterating what these tools are as we go along, minus removing the rear wheel. So um, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is break the chain. So in order to do that, we gotta pop out these pens. I'm using the Motion Pro uh, Jumbo Chain Breaker. This thing will break chains. It will also allow us to press plates back on and it will also allow us to flare rivets. So this is a great tool. Once again, I'll link this down in the description. What we're gonna wanna do, and I'm gonna do it off camera because I'm gonna get in your way here in a second, is we're gonna spin this outer bolt down until it makes contact with one of these pins. You wanna get it as lined as well as possible. And then once this is set, then we're gonna twist this outer one and there's a hardened steel pin in there that's spring loaded that will press the chain pin through. So let me get this set up. Okay, so while kind of hard to see because there's no way to really get a camera in here, all I've done is just hand tighten this down. Now I'm gonna take my wrench and my, my ratchet and I'm gonna start to twist on this. And what it's gonna do, because there's a hole in opening here in the back, it should push the pin directly through the chain and then we'll move on to the next pin. Uh, one thing I'll tell you, and it's kind of hard to understand, is if you get too much tension doing this, it probably means this tool is not aligned very well. And if that happens, then back it back out because you can actually bend that hardened pin. Ask me how I know. So I've ultimately decided it's a little bit easier to just use a box in instead of using the ratchet. And while you can hold this handle, I just prefer throwing a big wrench or a big adjustable on this bolt. It just works a little easier for me. Now normally you wouldn't stop here. I just wanna show you what it looks like. This is what we're driving out of here is, is let me get my light on it, is this pin right here. So I'm just gonna put the tool back on and press it the rest of the way through until it pops all the way out. Mm -hmm. 
There's the first pin. Now what we want to do is push the second pin out and then that'll release this link and then we'll be able to pull the chain all the way off the bike. So I'm going to do this and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Now the chain's broken. Okay, so with the chain broken, next thing I'm gonna do is remove the front sprocket cover. So you've got, I'm trying to remember where they all are, but I know we've got a bolt here. We're also gonna have to remove the slave cylinder. If memory serves me correct, we've got a couple more bolts, we'll find them, but let's get started here. Uh, you can use the Torx bit if you want. I'm just gonna use this eight mil T handle. And get another bolt here underneath the shifter and I believe that's it but we are going to take the slave cylinder off same deal a couple of eight millimeters and we're going to pop this off now in the meantime make sure you don't pull in your clutch lever because that would be a bad idea um, we're going to clean this up before we put it back on but in the meantime we're just going to set it over here out of the way and now we should be able to pull this sprocket cover off. It's probably gonna be full of gunk. So make sure you clean this before you put it back on too. Okay, so this next part is pretty easy. All we're simply gonna do is just pull the chain off of the bike. Because we will not be reusing this. Next up, we're gonna remove the front sprocket. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Obviously, the rear sprocket's already off. But we'll get the front sprocket off, make it a little bit easier to change this chain guide out. We're also gonna get out some brake cleaner and clean up all of this mess because there's all sorts of gunk all over the place. You know what, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and remove this sprocket guard. There's a uh, eight millimeter down here. There's also one right here behind the frame I can't show you. We're gonna pull it off so we can go ahead and clean it up. It'll also make it a little bit easier to get in here. Actually, I misspoke. The one here on the back side is a 10 millimeter. Just be careful when you take that off. There is a spacer here. Make sure you don't lose that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this thing up. All right, so back down here on the front sprocket after I've cleaned up some stuff, we got this safety washer here and I've driven it out some. It'll, on yours, will probably be bent over a little further. I'm just gonna take a screwdriver or punch uh, and just flatten this back out a little bit so then we can get this 32 millimeter nut off of the front sprocket and get it removed. All right, so with that washer flattened out, I'm gonna take an impact, got the bike in gear, and see if we can get this thing off of here. There we go. Now this washer, it's gonna be kind of hard to see on camera, and I'll show it to you when we get it off of there. It does have some teeth that help hold it on there. You should be able to see that. We're just gonna set these aside for right now. And then we should just be able to pull this pretty much directly off of there. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, I remember I couldn't pull it perfectly off last time because I don't quite have the clearance here on the swing arm. So I'm gonna have to loosen up the swing arm bolt, pull it through a little bit just to allow it to shimmy enough to give me that clearance I need. I'm trying to do my best to hold my head still so you can see. But you can see I just don't have the clearance. The teeth are catching right there. So let me get to the other side of the bike. All right, so using a 27 millimeter socket, we're just gonna loosen this up. All right, we're gonna set this nut to the side. We're not gonna take the swing arm bolt all the way out. We're gonna drive it through part way just so we can pivot this swing arm enough to give us a little bit of clearance. Maybe a little hard to tell, but I've just got the swing arm bolt a little ways through, but see what it'll allow me to do now. That's all the movement I'm gonna need in order to get the clearance I need right here to get the sprocket off. There we go, got the front sprocket off. All I'm doing is just pushing on the back of the swing arm a little bit just to give me enough clearance. So. Uh, as you can see, this one's not awful, but uh, at least not for 26,000 plus miles, but it's time for a new one. Okay, so next up, we're going to remove this upper chain guide. If you just want a video just on that, I'll link it up in the corner. I've got one just on it, but uh, we've got a fastener back here. We've got a fastener right back here, which is a little hard to see. And then I believe we have one fastener down here on the bottom. I'm going to get those off. Those are Torx bits. I'll put the size up on the screen and then we'll move on to getting the new one put on. All 
Okay, with the three fasteners and washers removed, all we have to do is just pull this thing off of here. And now we've got the old chain slider off. Now I do want to show a quick comparison of old versus new. You can see this one's really getting worn down down here on the back side, so it's definitely time for a new one. While I've got everything off the bike up here, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the swing arm a little bit before I put the new one back on. All right, with the swing arm cleaned up, we're going to feed the new one on. You can replace the fasteners if you want to, and the only thing we have here are these little T25 or uh, yeah, T25 bits with these washers. Um, I did replace them last time. They're in pretty good shape this time. If they're dirty, clean them up so you don't take the chance of uh, stripping them out as you put them back in. But um, let's just slide it back on. All right, got it back in place. Now, you want to make sure that this goes underneath of your upper chain guide back here or chain guard back here. And all we got to do is just twist them or uh, just snug everything back into place. I'm sure there's a torque spec. I'll put it up on the screen, but tight is good. All right, so I've got the uh, chain guide on. Next thing I want to do before we put the new front sprocket on is take a look here at the differences. Obviously, these teeth are a little bit wider than these teeth. These are starting to tear kind of in the one direction or however you want to refer to it. Also, if we take a look at the sides of them here and the rubber dampers, you can see where the rollers have started to eat into the old one. So anyway, long story short, it was time for a new front sprocket. So let's go ahead and press it back on to the bike. So pretty straightforward process. I don't know that it really matters which direction it goes. I like to have the part number facing out just because if I need the part number, it's a little bit easier. All we're gonna do is line the splines back up and just push it back on by hand. Now, we may have to push on this swing arm though to give us the clearance we need. All right, so it's pressed on. Sorry, couldn't really show you that because my head's in the way of the camera as we do that. Next thing we wanna do is probably clean this thing up and then once again, it's gonna go over the splines as well. And before we get the, the bolt put, or before we get the uh, sprocket nut put back on. So let me clean this up with a little bit of brake cleaner and a, uh, and a brush off screen. It may not look much better, but it is. So next up, we are just going to get this and you wanna make sure this is pressed in as far as it's gonna go. And then we're gonna get this, uh, this put on here so it sits right over these splines as well. All right, with some Loctite on the nut, we're gonna go ahead and spin it down by hand. Then we're gonna torque it down to 100 newt meters, which is about 74 foot pounds of torque, somewhere right around there. All right, so with it torqued down, the next thing we need to do is just pick a spot here on this safety washer, just grab a flat blade or something, just hammer it down a little bit. That's just your backup should your torque fail and your Loctite fail, you've got one more backup on that front sprocket. All right, so kind of hard to see and while not the prettiest, do have it bent back up some. Next, we're finally gonna show the rear sprocket because we haven't shown that thing at all yet. All right, so this is our rear sprocket and something I haven't mentioned throughout this process, this is a really good time to check your wheel bearings or anytime you've got the wheels off off the bike or anytime you're changing tires, whatever, when you're putting wheels back on the bike, always check the bearings. I've checked these bearings ahead of time. They're good. So this is our sprocket. This is the, this is the old one. It is connected on to this hub right here. I don't know what size those are, but I'll flash them up on the screen. We need to pull these bolts out and that will allow us to take this sprocket off of this hub to then put the new sprocket on. So you can see I've just got my sprocket here in the vise. Uh, it's a 17 millimeter. I'm just using an impact. I'm gonna pull each of these nuts off and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so with all the nuts removed, normally I wouldn't use a claw hammer, but we do need to get these bolts out. They may be a little sticky just because they're grime, those sorts of things. So let me get those out. Now with all of the bolts out, this carrier, this hub, and this rocket come apart. We're obviously gonna to toss this one. Uh, we're gonna clean this up a little bit and then we're gonna put the new sprocket on. So with this hub cleaned up, we're gonna take our sprocket. Now you see you got a ridge side here and a flat side here. We want the ridge side up. And then we're gonna take our bolts and we're just gonna 
We're just going to set them down in there right now. Might need cleaned up a little bit in my case. Also, upon further inspection, this bearing is starting to show signs of wear, so I will replace that as well as the rest of the rear wheel bearings uh, before my big cross country trip, but it'll be fine for this weekend. So anyway, we're going to place all these back down where they go and then we're gonna to start to uh, get the nuts placed on the other side. Now part of the reason you want this ridge side up is because when we go to flip this over and then tighten the nuts on the other side, these ridges will hold these bolts in place. I am gonna use a little bit of Loctite on the threads over here and then we're gonna to torque these nuts down to about 37 foot pounds or 50 newton meters. All done. So before we go to putting the rear wheel back on, uh, I went ahead and drove the swing arm bolt back through. We're gonna put this nut back on, torque it down to about 96 foot pounds or 130 newt meters. All right, so to my knowledge, this next part doesn't show up in any sort of service manual anywhere, but it was showed to me by a KTM mechanic in Belgium, and it's a great idea. These little cush drives, or bushings, or whatever you wanna call them, that are gonna fit back down in here. Uh, one thing that's really good to make these things last longer and I actually do this every time I change tires is take some silicone and coat them in that before putting them back in there. So I'm going to do that right now off camera and then we're going to put the rear sprocket and mount it back on the rear wheel. All right, so with our little rubber bushings back in, now really all we have to do is just set this back down into the wheel just by lining it up. Just press it in. That's it. Next thing we're going to do is put the wheel back on the bike. Obviously, I've got no chain on there. I haven't, uh, I haven't hooked up the, uh, the chain guide or anything up front. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But I just want to get the wheel back on and just put the, uh, the rear axle back through just to hold everything in place temporarily. We're not going to mess with any of the, the, uh, the chain adjusters, any of that stuff. So with the rear wheel back on, now comes the fun part, and that's putting the new chain on. So I'm gonna go ahead and route the new chain around. We're gonna slide this wheel as far forward as possible. We might even have to mess with the chain adjusters to slide those forward. And then we're gonna work on it back here on this rear sprocket to get the new chain pressed on. So with the chain kinda on, now what I'm gonna do is get a 13 millimeter and 10 millimeter wrench back these chain guides back pretty far or in in pretty far that way we can move this uh, uh, axle and rear wheel as far forward as possible to make it a little bit easier to get this master link pressed on okay so with everything loosened up as, as loose as we're going to get it this is what we want we want this to sit on the rear sprocket side by side perfectly now we're gonna go back into the package, grab our master link and get it prepared. While all these steps are important, this is probably the most important step. You've heard the dumb saying, or at least the old saying, a chain's only as strong as its weakest link. We gotta do our best job to put this on here. So inside your package, you have the master link with the pins, you've got your outer plate, you should have four O-rings and you've got some grease. We're gonna put a couple of O-rings down on the pins right now. Then we're gonna grease the hell out of these pins and then we're gonna push them through right here. So let me do that. Now this is a sealed chain. That's the purpose of the O-rings. And this is your grease that we're gonna seal in. So I'm gonna grab a knife and cut this open and we're gonna put a bunch of grease on these pins. Make sure you're greasing your O-rings too. Next thing we wanna do is come over here on our chain and we are going to run this in to here. And then we're gonna go back into the packet and we're gonna grab our last two O-rings, being sure to grease those as well. There's probably plenty of grease on those pins as it is, but we're gonna put a little bit of extra grease on these O-rings. Mainly, I mean, obviously you wanna help it keep sealed, but mainly it's just to hold them on there right now because we're gonna have to get this press plate on in just a few moments. All right, so we're almost there. We've got one piece left and that's our outer chain plate. Now when you take a look at it, there is a logo on it, and I just like to have, or I don't know if it's a logo or what, but there's some numbers indented on there. I like to have that on the outside temporarily, 
you're not going to be able to press this on by hand. We're going to go back to the Motion Pro tool, but I'm just going to go ahead and get it sat in place right this second. All right, so with the Motion Pro tool, we've got to make some adjustments to it now. And one of the things we need to do, is I didn't have to back this all the way out, but just so I can show you, is we're going to take this out. Hopefully we can get this pen out easily enough. Sometimes you just have to press on a little bit. We're going to get our hardened pen and our spring out. I'm just going to put that back in the box. And now what we're going to do is this piece is going to go in place. Because what we've got to do is literally press that plate on. So you need these two holes to allow the pens to protrude. So give me just a second to get this set up and I'll show you what we got to do here. So with the bigger bolt threaded back in, this simply just sets in place. What we're going to do now is we're going to line it up right over this face plate or that plate with the two pen holes aligned. Obviously on this side doesn't really matter because they've already got the cutouts on there. And we're going to put this back on the chain and then we're going to tighten this bolt down and that will press the plate on. Now you don't want to press it on too far or you take the chance of busting out the O-rings. So what I like to do is get out my calipers and measure a few of these to see how far they are and press this on enough that I feel like it's on there and then take it off and measure and then you might have to do it a couple of times but take your time on this step because if you press this on too far those o-rings aren't going to do anything and your chain's going to be sealed everywhere except for right here and that's going to end up being your failure point. So this is what I'm talking about. I'm going to pull out my calipers and I'm going to get some measurements. So I've got 20.9 there got 20.94, got 21.0 next to it. We'll spin it around a little bit. Got 21. So we're going to look for about 21 once we get this pressed on. If we go much more than that, like you get it down to 19 even, you've probably gone, and I'm talking millimeters, you've probably gone a little too far. So let me get this tool back on here. We're going to start to press it down a little bit, and then we'll, we'll check the measurement. And if we're there, great. And if we got to go a little further, that's fine too. So I feel like I only pressed it down a little bit and it's probably not on there far enough, but we're just going to go ahead and check it anyway. So I'm at 22.1 millimeters. So I'm going to put this back on and just twist this down just a little bit more and then I should be about right. Pull our mics back out, just double check a couple of these others. Didn't really move it that much, maybe, maybe about a tenth of a millimeter. So. We'll do it again. We're down to 20.6, perfect. I'm gonna leave that there. Last step is to flare these rivets. This is also a crucial step. Pressing on the plate is a crucial step and, press, and getting these rivets flared, also crucial. So let me change up the, the, uh, the tool a little bit and show you how to do this. So up until now, we've had this end on the tool. Now. We're going to pop it off and we are going to replace it with this one here with this little ball end on it. So that just threads in. It doesn't have to be real tight. This threads back in just, just like it has been. And then on this end where there's a hole, what we don't want to do when we're trying to flare this rivet, if there's nothing back here to catch it, it's just going to push the pin through and that does us no good. So this little piece here with this indent sits here, which allows it to rest on the back of the pen. So then when we screw this piece down, this will provide the pressure on the back and then that little ball in will flare the end of that pen out and then we'll be good to go. So like we did before, get your calipers out and do some measuring here to see how, how far these pens are flared out in this case. We're looking at about 6.3. The ones on here we haven't flared yet are about 5.1. So we're not talking about flaring it much, just a little bit. So once again, we're gonna get our tool in place. Now in this case, we gotta, we gotta do one, then the other. Same deal. Press it down a little bit, check your measurement. Press it down a little bit, check your measurement. You can always flare it out more, but you can't flare it out less. And if you flare it out too far, it'll actually weaken it and you know, it's just not gonna hold up long term. We flared it out a little, now we'll check our measurement. Didn't really move it much at all, maybe about a tenth of a millimeter. Let's 
think we're gonna be good there. I'm just eyeballing it. I can go a little more, but I don't go, wanna go much more than what I've got right there. All right, so if we take a look at my master link here, I've got them both flared out to about 5.7 millimeters. That should be great. We're gonna move back up here to the front, get the sprocket cover and uh, chain guide back on. Obviously, we have to adjust the chain and tighten down the rear wheel and all that stuff. All right, so we're gonna put this chain guard back on. I'm gonna fish it through. Now down here on where your slave cylinder goes on, there's two little prongs that are gonna stick right through there, so make sure they're lined up. And then we got a bolt here, and then the bolt with the spacer up here. It'll go frame, spacer, guide, bolt through, so. All right, so next up, we can take our slave cylinder pop it back into place. Those are the longer bolts. And then last but not least, we have our sprocket cover that we just kind of pop back into place. Now the last thing we need to do is adjust our chain. I love this Motion Pro tool and I'll link it down below. I have an entire video on chain adjustment. On this bike, you just line this tool up with the edge of the rear rim. You put it on here like this, you go up, you go down, and you get your measurement as to where it's at. On this, on this specific bike, it's gonna be 40 to 45 millimeter slack. I'm not gonna go over that in this video since you can just check out the video I've already shot. Same thing with remounting the rear wheel and the torque and all that sort of thing. I'll put the torque up on there, but if you need to know how to remount it, uh, check out that video because it goes into more depth than what I was able to do showing you how to replace the chain. So anyway guys, that is how you install one of the drive kits, chain sprocket kit, along with the chain slider on one of those KTM adventure bikes. Mechanically, it's not a very difficult job. It does take some time and obviously it does require at least one specialty tool. All the tools, part numbers, all those things, I'm gonna link down in the description below. Additionally, the wheel removal video will be down there in case you need to reference that as well as you know a chain adjustment video or chain maintenance video so anyway hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did please give it a big thumbs up if you're not a subscriber consider hitting that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles well this is the place to be if you have any questions about anything i did in this video let me know down in the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them and as always i'll talk to you again soon